I'm about to torch off this pile of brush behind me to make charcoal. That'll soon be 75 to 100 gallons, I'm guessing, of charcoal that I can put in my garden. We'll talk more about that presently, but for now, just stop burning brush. Stop it. Stop burning your brush into ash. It's so easy to make charcoal by the methods I use that, you know, all you need is some water and a match. It's almost that simple. If it just rained really hard for 24 hours, I tarped that off right before the rain to make sure that the center of the pile was dry. So I have a pile of pitch wood here. Also, people call it fat wood. It's uh, pine, actually fir in this case, saturated with uh, tree resin. So it burns super hot. I'll start a fire in the center with that and we'll talk more. I got deluged. All right, so I have a really fat wood here. This is extremely rich fat wood. It's just saturated with resin, so that's great. That's really gonna do the job, but I'm gonna lay these pieces down first as kind of a platform to get the fire going. But you know, with pitch, with this pitch wood, it's just so easy to start fires. I mean, this is just, as you can see, look at that. It's just solid sheet of resin. Scraping off some of the wet stuff. Yep, nice and dry in the middle here. This stuff is outstanding. There's water dripping down my leg. I got so much water in my pocket that it's it's actually, there's a puddle of water in my pocket. This stuff will burn so well. Let's see if my lighter has any life left in it here. And it also catches very easily. You know, pitch wood comes in different grades and this stuff is really high grade. And that's gonna go for, you know, a long time. So I think really just this much here with those slabs I put on there, which are also quite rich actually, is going to get this fire going pretty good. I'll be throwing other stuff on top of it too. So just to give you an idea how this goes, I just had to reset up the camera. Probably took me close to a minute. Look at that. Crazy. And remember I said it just rained for 24 hours? Well, this I just harvested. All of this. It's wet on the outside, but it's so full of resin that it doesn't get saturated with water because it's already saturated with waterproof resin. Did I mention, stop, stop burning your brush. Every brush pile is an opportunity. There we go. You'll notice that I stacked this pile pretty carefully. Um, it's you know, relatively vertically sided uh, versus just being a big mound like where you just keep throwing stuff on. And I also crisscross stacked it, like stacked some this way and then some this way and some that way, some this way. Kind of log cabin style because that's just a really efficient fire. Like it burns really hot and really fast because of the arrangement of the fuel. Um, yeah, we'll talk about that some other time. I gotta move. It's the side of my head's getting really hot. All right, let's talk for a minute about biochar and why you should do this. The only thing that's like a little bit more work than just burning a regular brush pile with this is stacking the wood carefully. And you don't have to do it, I just prefer to do it. Overall, it's just not that much more work than burning brush. You'll also notice that there has been just almost no smoke. That's because it's lit from the top. So all the gases are coming from underneath and traveling up through the flame and getting flared off. Very different than lighting it from the base or lighting it and then throwing stuff on it, which also works okay. 
but uh, this is a pretty much a superior system just for burning brush piles in general. You know, light them from the top. Got the, uh, the sun's peeking out here. So let's talk for a minute about what this means. So we're looking at 75 to 100 gallons of charcoal, like I said. So let's just say for math's sake, it's 75. There's about, conveniently, there's about 7.5 gallons per cubic foot. So that means we're gonna end up with 10 cubic feet. Yard is 27 cubic feet, so it's about a third of a yard, a little more than a third of a yard. So let's say we want to amend a soil in our garden, like a garden bed, to 12 inches deep at 10%. So if you've seen my videos on my leeks, the leeks that were the biggest were in the 10% section, and the ones in the 5% section were clearly bigger than the 0% section, and the zeros were like zero. They were zeros, not heroes. Heroes, zeros. So 10% in my garden really kicks some butt. That means that we can do a garden bed 100 square feet. That means, you know, 12 inches deep, 25 feet by 4 feet. And remember, this is permanently amended. Permanently amended. If you have 10 of those in your garden, which is a big-ass garden for most people, um, that's 10 brush piles like this, and you're done. Amazing. Stop burning your brush. Stop it. There's another method I use with a trench. It's really great too, and it's good for different stuff, like less brushy kind of stuff. Um, I use both methods just depending on what I've got to burn. So, stop it. Stop it. Stop it. Stop burning your brush. Make charcoal. What I'm going to do is, um, whenever I can get in there, I kind of burned a hole in the middle because it's so um, wet on the outside, so I guess I'm going to have to go push some of that in and once it's burned up to where I think most of it's charcoal I'll get a pole like a long pole and get in there and kind of like stir it up and get anything that's buried inside the charcoal that's not able to burn that still isn't charred all the way get that on the surface I might do a little managing to get it all burned or I might just leave some of it for the next pile then I'll take a hose and put it out and I'm done actually raining hard this morning so um, probably could have waited a little bit longer it's working out okay though I'm just gonna throw all this stuff into the middle I'll probably be quenching this within 15 or 20 minutes I think my estimate might have been a little generous there just kind of looking more like 50 or 60 gallons to me. I'm just going to tend this a little bit. The main thing I want to do is get under here and see these pieces that aren't burned all the way. I get those out. Sometimes it happens a lot. Sometimes it happens only a little bit. And again, I'll have to get everything burned, but I don't want too much left over. Like this just collapsed so fast on the wet ground that there's still stuff under there that's not at all burned. But all in all, I've still probably only spent, you know, 10 minutes total of actual working time tending this fire. So if that turns into 15 or 20 minutes, not bad. And this is a not a very well behaved pile as they go. This is the least well-behaved pile I've ever burned. Like, the, the middle's just totally not burned on the bottom. I mean, it'll work out. It's just going to take, take a little bit of time. But I'm just going to, you know, tease that around a little bit to burn up the last pieces of brush. There's um, a little bit in the center there where there's a lot of leaves mixed in that didn't burn. It might just scoop it out separate and throw it on a tree or something but pretty soon it'll be time to just quench the whole thing i want to quench it really thoroughly and i'll probably rake it around a little bit to make sure that it's completely out because if i pile it up and there's still one little burning ember in there i'll come back to a big crater you can see various spots of smoking that's completely dry just you know maybe four or five inches under the surface it's going to require quite a bit of watering 
you know, that's one thing about this method. If you can't get a hose in, you kind of got a problem. And then as I put it in the wheelbarrow, I'll probably spray it a little bit more just to make sure everything's out. There's a hot spot right there. And that's it. I'll let you know uh, how much we end up with. All right, this pile here is uh, probably a little bit under 45 gallons. And I have another pile that's about 30 gallons, but of mixed leaves, dirt, and charcoal. It's probably one quarter to one third charcoal. So we're looking at maybe around 50 gallons total. Most of the piles I burn um, and that size yield more like 70 plus gallons, but um, I think I just spent a lot more time trimming the brush in this case, uh, trimming it down smaller and then taking the big stuff away to uh, burn in the trench system. But in retrospect, that doesn't really make that much sense because it's easier to do it here. If I can burn something in these piles, I probably should because it's fast and I don't have to move it and I don't have to trim it and all that. So in the future, I'm probably going to look at being pretty careful to leave everything that's about two inches and down for this system and then the bigger stuff I'll haul off for the other trench system that I use. If we were to buy that, um, it's about 6.6 .6 cubic feet, uh, $30 a cubic foot at Home Depot. That's 180, 190 bucks. A short morning of stacking and a short morning of burning. It probably took me, the whole burning process took about two hours probably from start to finish and I wasn't working the whole time. You know, I wandered off a few times and stood around a lot and stuff like that. So I don't know what it, takes for you guys to make 190 bucks but for me that's a no-brainer and if I had had more wood like I've spent less time trimming I would have gotten more charcoal for the same amount of work as you know I did and if you build a big pile it doesn't really take that much longer to burn that and process it and manage it than it does to burn a small pile. Now if you were to take this and put it in a garden bed so you had 50 gallons we're looking at about a four by uh, 16 or 17 foot bed amended to 10%. The 10% section of the bed that I showed the leaks in this year, um, I would say four to 600% more growth in the 10% biochar than the 0% biochar. So that's four to six times as much food out of the same bed forever. You hear what I'm saying? Forever. Your lifetime, the next person's lifetime, the person after that, the person after that, the person after that. And we're talking a thousand years or more, unless you know the soil washes away or who knows what could happen, obviously, in a thousand years. But you get the idea. Nothing else I know of is gonna have that kind of effect in a soil. It's just, stop. You know, it just frustrates me so much to watch people burning brush into ashes. I have friends around here and just like stop, you know, stop burning your brush, just make charcoal, light it from the top and spray it with a hose. It doesn't have to be perfect. You could lose half of it, you know, like by managing it poorly or something like that. And you're still going to end up with a bunch of charcoal. And a lot of the soils around here just aren't that good. We have thin mountain soils. We're not, you know, we're not gardening in these deep uh, valley soils that are, you know, have built up over time with the best stuff that washed out of the mountains here. But we're dealing with a little, my soil's decent, but you know, it's never going to be super rich unless I do something like this. And what else is like this? Nothing that I know of. So yeah, I hope I drove the message home <laughs> well enough. Stop burning your brush, make charcoal. It's, it's just as easy. You can see my other videos on this method and the trench method, which I really like a lot too. And you can also just do, uh, you can stack other wood like boards and pallets and stuff. You can just stack them like this in a big rick, light them on the top, let them burn down, you know, manage them a little bit, spray them with a hose. It's that simple. If you have pallets, they're going to be nails, but just take a magnet and run it through the charcoal and you're done and just pick up almost all the nails. I don't know how it's going to work in your soil. You know, I mean, it's worth the gamble though. Everything I've put in has, that has, you know, had time to get established has done better than anything you know any control that's around it and with the results of other people and the terra preta soils and the african dark earth soils and um, other old accounts and stuff i think you can hardly go wrong with doing some experimenting if you have wood that you can burn and a place to burn it i know that's a limitation for some people but see kelpie wilson's backyard biochar website and she has all kinds of stuff on how to do it in your backyard some of the methods uh, produce very little smoke too but anything that you can char you know rotten wood old boards without as long as they don't have you know paint on them and stuff like that char it char it and bury it in your soil and see what happens and hopefully you'll have as good results as i've been having i just want as much as i can possibly get at this point 
so. All right. Um, stop. Stop it. I think it's, this one's 33%, so it's basically a third. Maybe 30%, but about a third. You can see how easily friable it is. Very, very friable.